Hey friends, it's Rabbi Jenny Solomon out here cruising uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina on this uh, Martin Luther King Day, this Tubi Shvat, the birthday or the holiday of the trees, um, and this week of Parsha Yitro. So I wanted to offer a Mincha moment actually in two parts this week. So I'll be back um, with part two tomorrow in my, my regular slotted time. But I was thinking about the connection this morning in Minyan um, between Yitro, this, this week's Torah portion, and this holiday in which, again, we celebrate the trees in Judaism and in the environment in general. And then, of course, honoring the memory and the legacy and the mandate of Martin Luther King Jr. And this is how they all came together for me. So. The Torah portion of Yitro, of course, is most famous for the Ten Commandments. We, Moses receives the Ten Commandments, um, and that is the, the incredibly dramatic and extraordinary revelatory moment uh, in this week's Torah portion. But the Torah portion actually opens with a conversation between Moses, Moshe, and his father-in-law, Yitro, who was not Jewish. And together they talked because basically Moses um, was expressing his sense of overwhelm that he just couldn't do it anymore. He couldn't take on all of the problems, all of the issues that were arising in his community and society. It was just too much for him to bear, too much for any one person to bear. And Nitro offered him great leadership wisdom great human wisdom. That is to say, no one person can take on all of society's problems. That's not how we solve massive issues, systemic issues. That's not how we, how we change and heal and repair society. So Moses, find some really wise people and assign those people to other people and assign those people to other people and have it work in such a way that those other good folks can take on some of the smaller problems, the smaller issues, so that Moses, you can really deal with the issues that you, only you, are suited to handle. So I wanna make a connection there to the trees. I'm reading a beautiful book, which was recommended to me by several people called Braiding Sweetgrass. And it's this amazing, um, I don't know, integration of indigenous wisdom um, from Native American culture and medicine and spiritual wisdom and, and environmental sustainability. And one of the things that I learned in this book, and I had heard this before, but it was explained in such an exquisite way, is that trees, of course, actually have a way, we now know, of communicating with one another. I love the aspen tree in particular, knowing that all of its roots are connected and it really is a single organism. But this is even one step further. It suggests that trees even that do not share a root system even that are somewhat um, in not in direct proximity can speak to each other through these little fungi that are beneath the earth sending messages to one another with the distinct intention so to speak of enabling not only one tree to thrive but all the trees to thrive. So I want to bring this, um, these two pieces together through um, uh, the way that we honor Dr. King. I remember when I was taking um, one of my first African American studies classes at Brown University as a college student, my professor, um, Professor Dyson, talking about this idea that in our Western culture and American culture, there is such an urge and a habit to lift up um, single people, right? So Martin Luther King, amazing. Rosa Parks, uh, standing to dismantle this system, it would take many, many, many people. 
And so I think um, one of the things that I am, am considering on this um, MLK Day is just the way in which um, we must, we must make change through community. That it's really about each one of us taking on, you know, in the language of the Torah portion, each one of us being a leader in our own sphere. Moses or Dr. King, no one person, whether it's the president of the United States or the president of another country, the president of the world, no one person can repair this world. We have to create a world in which many, many leaders and just humans and citizens can take on um, injustice as it arises in our own little Dalit Amot, our own little sphere. And like the trees, we are not independent from one another. It appears often that we are separate, but in fact, we are all connected underneath through organisms that are not visible to the eye. A single tree, when we look out, you know, at the, you can look behind me in our backyard here in North Carolina, it appears that these trees stand alone, but they don't. They are in connection and in community with one another in ways that we cannot see. And again, um, you know, as we think about the civil rights movement, it's easy to hold up certain figures as we should, as we should honor them. But it's easy to kind of hold them up and say, you know, just that person or just that person. And I think actually what um, Dr. King embodied and what he preached is that it has to be all of us um, and that we're all in this together. So every day and every night when I say Shema, I affirm that there is a oneness that is underlying all creation that I am a part of, that we are all a part of. And I think especially in this world of COVID, it is easy to feel incredibly alone and separate and disconnected. But today and this week, every day in fact, we can be reminded that we are all one. Shalom, peace.